Welcome to the Brittany Richardson Podcast, where we talk about the issues affecting us every day. And we hear from you, your stories, and how we may all improve our lives, as well as the lives of others all around us. So buckle your seatbelts as we have a no hold bar discussion about our world. Two, three, testing. See if we can get in sync here. I think we got it. This is going to be a test broadcast. As you guys can see, I still have an echo in my headset, so I'm bear with me. I have been testing the possibility of doing a live call-in show, which I've wanted to do with you guys for so long because there's so many of you guys, so many messages, comments, and there on multiple platforms that I have been getting. And I want the chance to hear your story and what you guys are experiencing. So it has been a very long road and very complicated process. I've literally spent about 16 hours trying to sync all of the audio, various media. We had to do phone patching capabilities. Uh, call forwarding. We had to have answering capabilities. It was huge. Like it was huge. And right now we also had to have a software that would restream. So we are live right now on, let's see if I can get this right. Brittany Richardson fan family, Brittany Richardson on Facebook, Brittany Richardson page on Facebook and Brittany in pink. So if we are a little laggy at times, that may be why, but Rest assured, I'm going to fine tune this. So in a minute, I'm going to take a call. Our topic for tonight is going to be, of course, the coronavirus. But I want to specifically touch on the PPP program and hear from some of you guys. I had a very negative experience with the PPP program. And I'm very concerned about not only it running out of funding, I think we kind of figured that was going to happen. My concern is how it's calculated to benefit the largest companies that don't seem to need it. Whereas many small businesses are left in the dark. And I'm going to get into that here in a few minutes. But first, I have been hearing stories on people who have had coronavirus symptoms. They've been messaging, commenting me, commenting Echo, I love you. I love you, Echo. ASMR. See, this is going to be like a dual ASMR, I swear, just because of my echo. We will get over the echo. We're going to have a relationship. I promise you. I love you, Mike. Okay. Anyway, I have been getting, hearing these stories from people who have had coronavirus symptoms, pretty much every symptom in the book, and even gotten very sick and to the point of seeking help. Like, you know, calling the hospitals or calling a doctor and saying, you know, help before this gets too bad. I need to be tested. And they're unable to get testing. And that about floored me. Like, I can understand just the common person calling in and requesting a test. You know, there's not enough tests to go around. It's slowly improving. However, what I cannot understand is... Why leave somebody until they're nearly on their deathbed before they'll even test you? And from the stats I read last, 
once you make it to ICU, you have a 50-50 shot. Like, that's it. Those are your odds. 50-50. <laughs> Roll of a dice, flip of a coin, whether you're going to make it. And it's concerning to me that so many people don't have the opportunity to get tested when they're showing serious symptoms. As I am trying to learn how to speak with an echo. Echo. <laughs> okay, so our first guest, and I need to text her real fast. This is going to be very off the cuff. Like, you'll see in a few minutes. I'm, If we have time, I'm going to actually show you guys the number. We have a 1888 one eight 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 number. There we go. Where you guys can call in. It'll even hold the calls ahead of time so I can see how many callers we have. And then one by one, take your calls. For the first time in my life, we have that capability. And I am so excited because there are so many of you. So let me text our first guest. This is actually going to be my sister who had quite the experience in trying to get some testing over some over her symptoms. So let me go ahead and text her. I have been live on like our private platforms. I've been testing this on like all the private platforms this afternoon going live with a smaller group of fans to try to work out all the bugs. So I think you are Jay. Um, so many of you had commented today. And helped me get rid of most of the echoes. I still hear the echo. Most of the time you guys don't. It is ringing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's try this. This is a call for on air live. To accept this call, press 1. To send the caller into voicemail, press 3. Hello, you are live on the air. Can you hear me? Testing. 1, 2, 3. And... Can you hear me? Hey, there we go. Oh my God, can you hear Hello. me okay? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Awesome. Thank God. I've been trying to work out all these bugs all afternoon and I'm one person. Like most people, I, I've talked to people in radio. I've talked to podcasters, YouTubers. They all have a huge team of people and they tell me you can't do this by yourself. So tonight's a trial. I beg to differ. I'm hoping we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're kicking butt. And thank you so much. If anyone can do it, I know you can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, everybody, this is my sister, Tab. And um, all I've heard about is um, a little bit of what Jordan told me about your experience with having some of the COVID-19 symptoms weeks ago. And, well, why don't you just tell me, tell us all your story and kind of what happened. Okay. Well, what happened was I, I started not feeling too good. I was running a little bit of a fever. I was having really bad stomach abdominal cramps. Mm -hmm. And it, it got really bad. And then I started having trouble breathing. And I know those were all the signs to it. And I wanted to go to see my doctor. And I called my doctor's office. He said he would not see me unless if I had been tested. So I called the clinic to try to get a test done. And they flat out told me my symptoms were not severe enough. And that they couldn't do anything with me. Oh, and no. they sent me different numbers to call different places to try to figure out what to do. And none of them could help me. And, you know, I worry about my family or the people I work with. And they all got families, too, that have family members who whose immune systems are completely compromised. And if they were to get this, it would be fatal. Right. And so the last thing I want to do is take this home to our family or bring it to them they take it home. Mm-hmm. And, and so... Did you so, get a chance to explain this? I mean, it's he's your doctor. You would think he would understand the risk. That That's crazy. Yes, I, I tried. To, it is. You know, and I tried to get a hold of many people. And the bosses that I work for, they didn't care. Oh, my God. They told me to go to work. 
You know, if I the distance, if I didn't feel comfortable, I wouldn't get fired for it. Mm-hmm. But chances are, I wouldn't keep my position at work. See, and that I think that's another thing that's not being talked about right now is a lot of companies will say if you don't feel comfortable, don't come in. You know, we back you in that sense. But then again, there's ramifications that we all realize is going to happen if you do take them up on that. And so it's kind of like a false sense of security or a false promise that they're making to, oh, yeah, if you don't feel good, if you don't, if you're concerned about this, don't come to work. And then you find yourself without a job. Yes. Or well, with the job, you're just demoted. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened to me if I were to take that time off. Because as much as I hate to say it, I'm a dime a dozen where I work. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly how they see us. And pretty much their standpoint is if you can go to work, go to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, there's too many companies that are like that. You know, I won't name names, but God, me and Jordan have both been through the ringer when it comes to companies that, you know, say we back you, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes down to it, it's like, hey, we've got work to do. We need you here at work. And, you know, they they can cut you just like that. Yeah. They have no sympathy. Mm Mm-hmm. They say it, but they really don't. At the end of the day, the only thing they see is money signs. Unfortunately. And the, the thing that they're not realizing is that it's us. It's the people that, the faces behind the company that are working so hard that make the company. You know, it's not just a numbers game. And it's that's really sad to see. It is. It's extremely sad to see. You know, this whole pandemic that's been going on has really brought out the true color in people. And some of it's really good, and others it is extremely sad and horrifying. It sure is. I'm just really hoping that society makes a change for a positive as a whole after this whole thing. Like... After after the toilet paper issue, after everybody hoarding the toilet paper and the shelves being bare, <laughs> I've said, at least if nothing else, America will have clean asses after this. Did I say ass on the air? I don't know if I can do that. FCC, you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. They will have clean bottoms after all this. <laughs> God, I hope so. So how are you feeling now after all of this? I... I am actually feeling much better. I've never found out what was wrong with me, but I'm feeling much better now. I had a few days to rest and recoup, and everything's going good. Good. I am so happy to hear that. thank goodness for that. Yeah, thank God. Oh, my God. This has been a terrifying time for me, like worrying about our family. And like you said, so many of us have compromised immune systems and it's like we feel like we're in the midst of a battle without any armor and then when you're calling in the troops for help you're not even getting the help that you need no it is absolutely horrifying and gut-wrenching whenever you have to go to work every day and dealing with the public it is I have some customers that are really grateful and understanding, and then I have others that are just looking for a reason to complain, and they aren't realizing just how hard it is for us to be doing this for them. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to be able to be working right now. I'm extremely grateful for that. I don't want to take that for granted at all. And for the people who have been very appreciative, it's amazing, and I cannot thank them enough. They make my life and my coworkers' life a million times easier. That is awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of truck drivers are seeing that appreciation now. Anybody who's essential staff working in the stores or driving the freight to the stores, 
we're feeling that appreciation right now. But I, I think you know, it's probably human nature, but I think so many of us are concerned that as soon as this blows over, that we're going to be forgotten about again. And I, if there's one thing that I could say to society is continue to appreciate what we have and just how fragile our system is, you know, think the people behind all of this that keeps everything moving. Yes, I'm extremely grateful for all the truck drivers out there who are doing everything they need to do. You know, you know I have the utmost respect for you, and I love you, and my dad, and Patrick, <laughs> No, all of you guys out there. <laughs> Speaking of that, if you hear any crazy yelling or stuff going on in the background, that would be Patrick and Jordan. <laughs> Actually, I don't hear anything. You got set. Oh, good. You're doing great. Oh, my God. good. So real quick before I let you go, back on the doctor issue, when you called, did he give you any options? Because I know if it were me, if I'm having shortness of breath, it's it's getting difficult to breathe, I've got a com compromised immune system, and a lot of the symptoms, it, did, did he give you any options or tell you, you know, if this happens, call back? Like, that's scary. No, he just said he can't help me until I get tested. Did he? So he didn't. He, and it comes. He's got to order the test, doesn't he? Or does uh, he? We have a walk-in clinic that mm -hmm. does the testing, but they won't see you unless if you're pretty much dying already, and it's it's horrible. You know, you have all these people out here wanting to make sure they're okay that are showing these symptoms and they can't oh, yeah. even get tested. Yeah, that's terrifying. And, and they can't go to their doctors and find out what's wrong because they won't see them unless they have a test saying that they are negative. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's... So he didn't give me any other options except to go get tested. And wow. once I do, then I can go and see him. If it came back negative. Yeah, it sounds to me like it's a whole catch-22 and there's too much red tape in between trying to get people the help that they need. Because, like I was saying, you know, a lot of the statistics are once you're in the ICU, which if difficulty breathing, for instance, gets worse and they go, okay, now you're tested positive. Let's take you to the hospital. They're going to put you in ICU more than likely. And you got a 50-50 shot at that point. So it's like, oh my God, we need to get our act together with how the system and testing and the doctors communicate. Yes, I'm with 100%. They really do need to get their act together and find a better way to handle this and how they are right now. Yeah, I agree completely. You know, you sh they shouldn't be waiting until <clears throat> it's at its worst to try to help them. Yeah, and too often that's how our system of government, Republican, Democrat, Independent, I really don't care who it is. It seems to just be a government thing. <laughs> so there seems to be too many uh, chiefs and not enough Indians in between getting things done in our society. Sadly, that is absolutely right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for calling in. I love you so much. And I know Jordan does. Patrick does. We miss you guys. Like, we've been itching to come down there and visit. And, you know, we're, we're still seeing these travel restrictions in place. So we're kind of stuck. I know it breaks my heart that I can't see you guys. And I love and miss you so much. And thank you so much for having me on and letting me tell you my story. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm, bye. Okay, as you guys heard, let me make sure we're our live stream. I need to check on. <laughs> I'm playing like Sound Woman and um, electronics monitor. I don't even know what you call it. I'm like trying to manage mixers and everything else. Okay, so. Yeah, it looks like we are live on all platforms. Everything looks good. 
by the way, guys, be sure to share this. I, I just really hope and pray that our sis and I'm I'm not particularly particularly religious, but I pray to God that this system gets changed and we figure out a better way to do things, especially after this pandemic is done. So I am going to do a very first. And I'm going to show you guys the call-in number. And we're going to test this with several callers. So I'm going to invite you guys. I'm going to open the phone lines and allow you guys to call in. Now, we have some very, very high-tech digital pieces of equipment to show you guys the number. Yes, it is literally a sheet of paper. This is the humble beginnings that we have. The number is 888 three two two seven seven five three listen to the prompts should be option one should take you to the live uh, call in portion and it will put you on a hold until we take your call so if I'm already on the line don't worry it'll just keep looping the hold until I key you on live and things will get better also where when it comes to all this technical stuff i'm telling you like to get all this stuff to see we had to sync like a hundred different components to make this work tonight so that's why i didn't announce it ahead of time or anything like that i just wanted to go live and say you know what we're just gonna test this thing we're just just gonna do it and see how it goes and afterwards we will work out the rest of the kinks once again the phone lines are 888-322-7753. Feel free to comment in the, put that in the comments. I should have pinned that as a post, honestly, before this thing started. 888-322-7753. And while we're waiting to see if anybody wants to call in and say howdy tonight or talk about their experience with this, the coronavirus testing or if you have a comment when it comes to the PPP program or really anything you want to talk about. I am very open. Like I'm very open and transparent when it comes to this stuff, as you guys know. So in the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened with my experience in the PPP program. And then if somebody calls, we'll take your calls. I had called some transportation tax professionals. I'll leave it at that. It's not the ones that I'm in talks with right now behind the scenes, which you'll find about soon because they are amazing. Oh my God. But one thing that I, I had called these tax professionals because I was going to look to get the PPP, pro, pro, PPP program funding. And the reason being is well, for one, I'm doing pretty well right now. I'm staying busy, running loads, making sure stores are supplied. My concern is what happens if part of the economy collapses or what happens if the manufacturers suddenly close up and I'm out of work. So one of my concerns was that even though I'm doing well at the moment, financially, what's going to happen three weeks down the road? I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't need to apply for the PPP. I'm doing good now. What happens a month or two down the road? Also, as they wrote, raised on Road Dog Trucker on, on their prog program. I got to get rid of this echo. Oh my God. It's so off the cuff. But I was listening to Road Dog this week and the radio, the guy that was on there, the host was mentioning that his thing is all of my competitors are going to go out and take advantage of this PPP paycheck protection program and take these large sums of money and immediately invest it into their business. And then it's going to run out of money. I'm not going to be able to get it. And now my competitors are doing twice as good as me. And then if the economy collapses, I'm out on the street. So that's why I had looked into applying for it. Here is what concerns me and here is what I was told is in order to qualify 
for the PPP program, which if you're a lease purchase driver or you're a 1099 contractor, you're self-employed. Like, you're paying your own payroll. So, technically speaking, you, um, you can apply for this. You qualify. So, I got a call and they said how it's calculated is they go based off of the two, last two year uh, tax filings, right? And if you're unfamiliar with business, we have to file what's called a Schedule C, which is a, you know, profit or loss statement showing after expenses what we make. What I was told, and you guys can tell me different, like you guys are welcome to call in and completely disagree with me or tell me how it is because I use software that integrates the Schedule C automatically. So I don't manually calculate these things. But I was told it's going to go based off of your business profit is what's going to determine. That's what they're going to use to calculate 2.5 times that number and then pay you out so that you can pay your employees. And I, when I first heard that, I'm like, wait, what? What? Okay, your employees are a tax write-off. Like, they're a deduction. So you mean to tell me that... The amount you qualify for on the PPP is going to be based off your profits after deductions. Like, what if you're good with your money and you've taken all the legal write-offs that you can as a business owner? You're doing what you're legally allowed to do and making smart, smart business decisions. You're paying all your contractors, your W-2 employees. And yet, after all is said and done, you're not showing much of a profit. And that tiny little number, like I know companies, heck, I know for the longest time, Amazon was zeroing out their taxes. So by taking legal deductions and investing in growth, I mean, a smart business owner reinvests in growth and pays less in taxes doing the whole thing to guarantee more jobs and boost the economy in the process. The problem I have is if you do this, according to what I was told on the phone, you qualify for basically nothing when it comes to the PPP program. You might get a $500 check, which isn't gonna even pay your payroll for a week. Yourself, let alone anybody that's on payroll. So, it appears to me that from the start, this program, when it was in legislation, wasn't even structured to benefit the small business owner at all. Like, at all. It's the ones that are going to show a mass profit and have all this extra money that didn't reinvest, that are just sitting on it, that don't need the money necessarily to begin with, that are getting the money. At least that is what I was told. I'm going to give you guys the number one more time just in case you have comments or um, anything else. The number is 188. Here, let me put it on the screen. <laughs> let me put it on the screen with our fancy digital equipment here. 188-322-7753 to talk to me live right now on the air. So, or on the uh, fiber optics, however you want to put that, since this is on social media, aka our new digital air. I'll call it digital air. That works. But yeah, it just really concerns me how this thing is structured. If they don't fundamentally a cha change the way this thing is structured, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. Like we're shooting ourselves in the foot as a country. And this just really, really concerns me. So once again, that number is 888-322-7753. Anybody that wants to call in, test the system. And if you have called in and can't get through for some reason, just let me know in the comments if there's any technical glitches, technical problems. Be sure to let me know down in the comments so that I can address them. Also, just a quick side note on this whole thing. I'm working 
with us broadcasting on multiple platforms, and I'm hoping, and uh, I'm just hoping so much that we can do this on a weekly basis, and maybe even on bigger platforms. But we have multiple comment feeds on each platform. Obviously, I can't see all of those because we're on so many platforms. One thing I'm working on behind the scenes is, and I'm hopefully, hopefully going to do this tomorrow, is integrate a text box that shows up. I've, they say it can be done with the software I'm using where it will show the comment feed from all of the platforms. Like every, it, even if we added YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, I mean, we could, we can broadcast over 30 platforms and, you know, with tens of thousands of people and followers and subscribers on each. And we will have a central chat where I can actually see what you guys are saying. In the meantime, see if I can pull up any of the comments on any of these, um, platforms since we don't have that said chat feed and maybe even put the number down for you guys to where you can save it and uh, give me a call. Ooh, Barry, Barry Holdenbach, you are awesome. He's been helping me behind the scenes when we were testing some of the earlier live feeds um, on some of the private platforms. And he has posted the number. That is the number, 1-888-322-7753. Randy, he has been following for so long. Love you, Randy. You're awesome. Um, Randy says, now you're Rush Limbaugh. And has the laugh face. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. No comment. By the way, guys. Just so you know, because I am political, I really am, but here's my passion. My passion is people. I'm passionate about our world and how we can see a better life, better life for everybody. Like I'm all about self-improvement and learning how to do things smarter, things that are, that'll bet, that will better everybody. I'm going to start talking really slow to defeat this echo. Echo. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> this needs to just be renamed the ASMR podcast. <laughs> RTI, this is really not a sexual program. <laughs> be getting calls from the office tomorrow. Have safety up my butt again. Bro. No, I love our safety department. I really do give them hell though. Like it's just the nature of the thing because a safety department in a transportation, in the transportation industry for a company, they're kind of their own entity. That's just how it always seems to work. And they have to be, they have to be real straight faced and professional most of the time. And like, Oh, I don't know if we can do that. And so I give them hell. It's good for them. It keeps them, it keeps things lively. There's a couple of times I walked in and played some pranks on him. <laughs> I did get a laugh out of him, though. Laughter does good like a medicine. An old ancient book once said. So let's look at some of the other comments. They should be doing everything um, by, a book, by the book, but they do it backwards. And that's very consistent with government, unfortunately. I think, but the thing is, like... Okay, as you can tell, I get on so many rabbit trails. Back to the independent. My passion is people. And the way we do things in our society is so antiquated. Like, it is so antiquated. Okay, looks like we got a caller. Hang on. You guys are welcome to interrupt me with a call at any time. Let's see who we got. This is a call for On Air Live from Barry Hollenbach to a Okay, Eric, you are on the air live with me. Can you hear me? Um, Brittany, it's Barry. Barry. Okay, I apologize. My oh, it's, automated... It's Barry, sorry. Barry? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Barry, okay, the one that's been helping me with the tech stuff today. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> sorry, How I got are you doing tonight? Because it's feedback. I'm doing pretty good. 
Awesome. What's on your not? What is on your mind? If I can defeat my echo. I I know the difficulties. I'm actually a professional uh, audio video technician and a DJ on the side, so I know how that issue is with the echo and everything with that. Oh my God! Um, yes, you're I mean, gonna have to PM me later. Later. Side note. <laughs> Yes, I tried uh, sending stuff earlier to all of your pages, but it's like I have all three of you, and I'm not sure where all the messages are going. <laughs> I'm sure I'll I'll put on my catcher's mitt and go catch them later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's o it's always the fun part on that one. The stupid computer that I have does not want to work with me. It is, yeah, especially when you have you know so many platforms that have grown. Like here lately, they've just exploded, and my messages have went into the thousands, and it's like. I'm so passionate about checking them and connecting with people. And unfortunately, a lot of them get lost if I don't know to look for them. Oh, yeah, it, it is like one of the hardest things. And it's like, especially right now with the coronavirus going on and so many, like even your bands, your DJs, or even your YouTubers now, they're taking everything to their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of it going on, a lot of these people, they don't have like either the podcast setups or any type of platform to try to help them. So they're just like going strictly Facebook live and they're not seeing their comments coming up. They're not able to see what's going on. Or now I did notice a lot of your churches, they have one that they're using this big uh, software out there. And the church that I belong to, we actually use it. And it's called Switcher Audio. And it's Switcher Studios is what they did. Is you can turn on stream on a lot of different platforms at numerous different angles. And you can turn around and have multiple devices all at one shot in the setup. So you could be running a computer, at least eight different cell phones, iPads, tablets, and everything, and it brings everything right to you. So even though you're on like four or five different pages, you can still see all the comments in one area. You can see everything going through, and it's like it works out perfectly for us. It's and like, it's especially called, with me, like I try. It's called I try Switcher with a lot of Switcher software. Audio. Yeah, it's called yeah, uh, Switcher Studios. Studios, gotcha. Yes. I'm writing that down. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I mean, it's amazing because you got like it brought like Zoom, YouTube, uh, Facebook is on there, Twitter, Instagram. You could basically do all those all in one shot. That is awesome. See, I went with. Um, I'll tell you guys what I'm using. They're not a sponsor or anything, but okay. There's virtual phone. Um, it is called Restream.io is the platform I went through. It is kind of pricey, so I'm just kind of testing yeah. it out Unfortunately, today. Unfortunately, like, yeah, yeah, and some, some of the issues with that one there is it's not really originally set up to be, like, streaming at the same time where everybody's in your stuff watching it. It's basically, like, you got the stream, and it's more of an editorial software to put out later. Got you. Well, it sounds like the Switcher Studios may be a little better way to go as far as multi-broadcasting oh, the live feed. It, it is a lot yeah. easier doing with Switcher because you can turn around and do everything. It's like even with me, like I DJ, so it's like a lot easier where I can turn around and get like my camera modes out where I have one out on the dance floor, one in the audience. I can turn around and pull them out in different angles to work with it. So it works perfect. But like right now, the one thing, the reason why I call it in is actually – it works out because I saw you as we're talking about with the virus and everything that everybody's going through. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a first responder with emergency disaster services. And a lot of people automatically, they think of the Salvation Army because so many people know the Salvation Army right away. Mm -hmm. I don't run with the Salvation Army. I run a lot higher, which a lot of people don't understand this. There's numerous agencies out there in government, and as soon as you throw out the name, everybody's like, oh, you're this, this, and this, and it throws them off because – Homeland Security, which is who I work with, automatically everybody thinks, oh, you're a federal agent. You got to do this. You got to do that. And it's like mm -hmm. they're a federal agency. Don't get me wrong. But when you're working with your emergency management services, you're not like almost in the federal field. Like you're basically there to assist other uh, agencies with what they already know but not, might not have the information to try and get the help for. Mm -hmm. What do so they like, call – they call yeah. the NGOs, don't they, non-government organizations um, that assist? Basically, like your your non-government organizations would be like your uh, local or your state levels. So like, mm -hmm. so basically, you'd be like your local fire department or police department for what I go out and work with. And then sometimes your state troopers have to come into a system. 
Now, when they ask for emergency disaster services to come in, usually the Salvation Army, Army or your Red Cross would be your first agency there to assist because they're already going to know what's going on in that area before they get to us and call us in. And usually when they do call us in, it's like, unfortunately, it's like a p pandemic issue, like what we're dealing with now or a natural disaster that like a lot of different areas dealing with it. Like when we back in, at 9-11, they were deployed um, 2011 here in Pennsylvania, which is where I'm located at. When they had the big flooding up here in our area, we got deployed to assist with that. And I mean, like the one saddest part is I've been realizing a lot, and I'm not sure how many people out there on Facebook have actually got to see it. Because I know a lot of the issues is a lot of stuff that you try posting about the virus and everything on Facebook has been blocked. That's like Facebook went through. Facebook was going through and anything that was not listed or posted by a government agency or shared from a government agency's page was all blocked. Have, okay, and, so I've noticed that too, just a quick side note, not to interrupt you, but um, oh, no, that's fine. I, I noticed that early on, like when I, when I first did a video on face, on YouTube, like YouTube, I got notifications. Hey, this is a controversial topic. We're discontinuing your monetization mm -hmm. on this video. Please be advised. We don't want you to speak about, you know, it was really intimidating. Oh, I was getting all that stuff. I was getting all that. And I'm like, um, they can't stop me because we are protected. I can't even remember the amendments. I wasn't good at this stuff in school, but mm -hmm. under the freedom of speech, we are covered underneath that. And even me, even worse, is I do freelance press work on the side, so I'm even more covered underneath that. Mm -hmm. So, like, I bounced around, and it's like, okay, what can I legally do and what I can I not do? So then where I basically got them at is I'm affiliated with multiple news teams for doing my freelance press work. Mm -hmm. So whatever they posted, I just shared. And it basically, it broke the guidelines of what Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and everybody was putting out. They're saying, hey, you can't do this, this, and this. But when they see that you're sharing these other platforms, it's like, boom, we can't stop you now because this is somebody that is credible sources that they have to go off of. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, and the hardest part was there was multiple, multiple videos out there that I was sharing to platforms that were doctors, uh, coroners, agencies, and everything telling people what the government was sending them in letters telling them that, hey, and I mean, it started a big fight for me on Facebook with even on my own page, on my, my press page that I run and everything, I started end up starting big fights because when I was telling people, hey, these videos are being given out by these corner agencies stating that they've had letters sent to them by their government saying no matter what a death report is during this time, just mark on the death certificates coronavirus. And it, I mean, it was sad because even our own president stated right not too many weeks ago, he stated – that some of these cases were not coronavirus deaths, and everybody's like, oh, they're all that one. And, I mean, it was kind of a little tricky because he stated if we pay attention to some of the, the polls and the numbers mm -hmm. that we have been given, he specifically said I would take that number and cut it in half because that's what we're sitting at. Oh, wow. And then, and then I'm like, okay, well, there's a little controversial issue here because unless you have somebody that works in a medical field, that can back that up because right now you only have one person saying this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and the one thing I was always taught, is especially, I mean, I grew up in the church and everything and I hate to put it this way, but scripture does tell us to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Usually if you have one person saying something, it's kind of iffy to believe it. But when you have two or more saying something, then it's where you got to start asking the questions. How true is this? What's the information that these people are getting that we as a public are not hearing? Mm -hmm. And right. once, you, I, once, once I started looking into it, and I have family members that are nurses and doctors and some of the fire departments I work with, we started getting some of these reports that we're hearing. And they're I'm like, you know, how many other people are hearing this issue? And when I found out that I wasn't the only one hearing about it, I'm like, okay, now we really have to look into this. Well, one of my friends, his lost his family, a family member, I think it was his aunt, he said, to the virus. But yet another person that was in the same area as him, their family member was marked on the same exact day as the virus. But when they 
asked for a second look at the case, it turned out to just be regular cancer. Oh, wow. wow. And it's like to find out is this was really going down on a lot of people. So it's like, it's kind of hard. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and she's like, it's hard with the virus. I mean, I'm not in the hospital, so I don't know how they're all doing it. It's like with all this, um, you have to stay six feet away. We have to wear the masks, the gloves and everything. The one thing I just wanted was, I'm not sure if anybody in the comments wants to uh, jump in on this one, but the, clo- the closure that we usually can get when we have to say goodbye to a loved one is how hard what is it for people? And that was my question is, how hard is it for people that their loved ones that have been lost to the virus could not be there to touch that person for that closure? Mm-hmm. So true. Because that's one... That's one of the hardest parts in our in like for what they say is when we mourn the loss of a loved one, either A, we need the closure of being able to touch that person to say our last goodbyes, or where that's far away because we can't be there to turn around, put our hand on them, and say it's okay, I got this or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest thing to deal with. It really is. It really is. Yeah, I won't comment too much on the situation, but I lost a family member last year and it was really hard on me. I wasn't able to make it to the funeral. There was some family politics. I'll just leave it at that. And, um, there wasn't closure. And so I experienced that myself knowing that you have a loved one in the hospital who's on their deathbed and you mm-hmm. can't get to them. You can't talk to them. You can't reassure them. And and then it's just gone. And there wasn't any, any closure at all for me. And that was terribly hard. That was terribly, terribly hard for me. I know it's it's one of the hardest things to deal with. Because it's like, every, unfortunately, everybody does mourn in their own way. And yes, we do need that. There's all different uh, statements of how long it takes. Some people are like good right off the bat. Others could be a couple weeks, a couple months. And there's some people that it's been six or seven years and still have not had that closure yet. Mm-hmm. So true. And I did, like, I just recently went to a class on this topic right before the virus hit. And I'm sitting there, like, in class. I'm like, I don't know why I'm going through this class as a first responder and why I have to know this stuff. And then it's like this virus hits. And I'm looking at myself. I'm like, Oh my God. Wow. This is not, it's, it's not good because now mm-hmm. I'm seeing what they really mean. I'm thinking unless you can actually see it, it's hard to understand what people are really going through. Mm-hmm. It sure is. So they, they, like, they actually taught some of that in the first responder training. Um, I... Not all first responders uh, training does teach with the uh, different topics on this one, but mm-hmm. with me also, I, ha- I had the background of the Salvation Army and their emergency mm-hmm. disaster service, or as many people know as Salvation Army EDS. Mm-hmm. I was a member of a Salvation Army church before I had some issues and I left and went to another uh, different church mm-hmm. and they did the classes there. So I've taken their emergency disaster courses while also going back to school for my other stuff. Okay. Right after I, and it, I mean, it was kind of hard because I can't, at, for a long time, like I'm only 27 now, and I was driving a tractor trailer for my family's farm that we had before we lost the farm to a dairy fire. So right when I came off the road, I was looking for all kinds of things to do in my life. And it's like, I kept finding things I knew what to do, but I just didn't want to get back into it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, everything led me back into going the way I used to do. Mm-hmm. So it's like now I'm no longer on the road full time. I'm basically, I'm out there either A, I'm out DJing somewhere or running sound for a band, or I'm out there as a first responder trying to put in the help wherever I can. Mm-hmm. But that's so cool because I I think with a lot of us, I know there's been so many times that I'm like, which direction am I going with my life or job or career? And I kind of just followed a hunch. I kind of just followed where my passions and interests were and I always ended up finding, even though it didn't make sense at first, I always ended up finding myself in the right place with the right skill to be able to help others and touch somebody else's life. And, and, and I mean, 
and I, I mean, there's so many people like, oh, I don't believe the way the church is. I don't believe this or this. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter if we believe in God or we have the faith in God. Mm-hmm. We all have faith in something. We just don't know what. And I, I'm going to be the first one to admit I am a chaplain. I do have the degree for it, but I don't always follow through with it. Mm-hmm. But I always tell somebody, no matter what we believe in, we are sent somewhere with the knowledge that we know and the training that we have for a reason that somebody there needs us specifically. It may not be because we are there to be needed for that job. Like a long time, like I was working as a janitor in a company that, and I hated the company because it was, they were not the best to us. Like you were just a number. They didn't care if you, if you were home sick, they didn't care that like, you could have been in a hospital throwing up and they wanted you at work. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I did lose my job because I ended up in the hospital. And they turned around and basically said, "We don't care. You're fired." Oh my god! I'm like, okay. But through that whole entire process, mm-hmm. I ended up finding out the owner of the company, his daughter was going through a hard time, and she knew like my background with my family and the way like I was abused throughout my whole life with my family because my dad was a major alcoholic, mm-hmm. and just. For her to see that no matter what, I was getting up every single day, I was going to work, I still had a smile on my face, even with my issues going on back home, that was able to help her out, even though I never once spoke to this girl until it was two years after working for that company. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. yeah and she, I... and her, her exact words to me were, how did you do it? <laughs> and, that's, and that's where you get the hardest point because it's like, um, do I – announce about my religion like we're supposed to what, what we're taught in the church mm-hmm. or do I just say it's not through me it's through somebody else and mm-hmm. it kind of gives you the point where you can either a you can do the uh, leading for Christ and that stuff like we're taught in the church but now in the day that we are in unfortunately it gets so controversial and it's like and actually trying to throw going to a bar and you throw religion and politics on top of the It's like, oh, sorry. DJing, you know, getting this thing down. And then all of a sudden, hey, by the way, I let me read you a scripture verse. Y'all saved. But no, <laughs> I think. I've, I've I, had some of those cases, trust me. I think the key to this whole thing is no matter what your faith is. And this is why I've always said, you know, I'm not religious per se. I have a, I have a very strong background in the church and study of multiple different um, religions. But one thing Mm -hmm. that it comes back to is being authentic. As people, we live in a free country where we can speak up and share our perspectives. And having that share ability to share back and forth in a free and open way, I think it helps sharpen all of us, no matter where you're at. And no matter what your faith is, whether you're a Christian or whether you're Wiccan or anything else, if you can show that, hey, I'm authentically on a journey of truth here and this is what I've seen, this is what I've experienced, I don't know all there is to know, but I know this and be able to share that with others. I think that's so powerful. It's so true and... I honestly try telling people it's not what you believe. It's what you feel in your heart that you can share to others. Mm-hmm. If, if your heart is full of uh, anger and greed and nastiness, you're going to spread it around to other people. But when you surround yourself with other good people, it's like, oh, I see this person's always happy, go giddy. They're always happy, giddy, mm-hmm. all this stuff. I want to be in that group. I want to see what they're doing. I want to I want to be like that. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell a, you can usually tell the people just by walking in when you say good morning to them. And there's those ones where you know they have the shirts, they have the mugs and everything that says, Don't talk to me until you see my coffee level this low or me on my second cup. <laughs> and I will put it this way. Mm-hmm. I have a coffee cup to this day and it's actually from Love's Travel Stops and I have a second one hidden somewhere from Pilot Travel Stops. My one coffee mug is a one-gallon coffee cup. My other one is a three-gallon coffee mug. And oh on the God. cup, it says, I am a truck driver. Do not radio me on the radio or see me in person. Say good morning to these two cups are empty. <laughs> <laughs> and this one person walked up to me the one day because, unfortunately, I didn't realize that in my truck I had the hiding pond. And I thought I'd hit the switch and turn them off. I turned on and flipped the switch the opposite direction. 
Mm -hmm. And I was basically shoot my hiding into a truck across, across from me. And he comes over and goes, I don't care what your cup says, but your high beams are on. And I looked at the guy and said, I, am, I, said, I said, sir, I am so sorry. I slipped them off. And I said, I didn't realize I slipped the switch opposite direction. Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, these older trucks, trucks, he goes, that happens all the time. I said, well, it would be nice if someone decided not to turn on and turn my whole dashboard upside down. <laughs> he goes, well, that's the hardest part. Because, like, they had to take my dashboard out to fix something. Mm -hmm. And when someone put it back on, they turned around, flipped the dashboard upside down, so all my controls were backwards. Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> so like, where the on switch should be was actually the off switch, and I'm like, oh great. Oh great, everything's just backwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. And of course, that oh, night sorry. I was half asleep. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I was ahead. half asleep that night, so it so it was just harder for me. I said to the guy, I said, I don't care what these coffee cups that you see set on my dashboard say. Mm -hmm. I said, if you have an issue, I said, I'm right across from you. I said, you can walk over here anytime and knock on my truck. I don't care if it's 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. This truck may be pitch black, but I said, that dash cam right here will see everything. Exactly. Exactly. Was, thank God for that dash cam. Thank God for that dash cam because if it wasn't for me having my dash cam, that poor truck driver would have had a headache when he pulled out. <laughs> like, that is. In the middle, mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. And it, I mean, if there's any truckers on here, I can tell you right now, the best thing to do is if you have a dash cam and you're out there somewhere at night, they show, there's so many different tricks and hacks to make sure that people can't get into your trucks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I see, I see so many people like buying a ratchet strap and strapping their doors to each other. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is your seatbelts in the truck are the most valuable asset ever for keeping your door shut when you're sleeping at night. That's so true. Because you just, all you have to do is just wrap it twice around your door handle and buckle it in because there's nothing they can do to get that out. Because mm -hmm. the only way through that truck is to smash your window. By the time you smash that window out, we know you're coming in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we, we happen to have the dash cam set, set up and it was pointing right at this guy's truck. And my dash cam actually caught somebody in the middle of the night coming over and pulling his kingpin on his trailer. Oh my God. And Were you... Were you able when to I, identify the company up, at all, or? Um, it was just some random vehicle, but it wasn't even a tractor trailer. Like some black SUV pulled up, walks over, pulls the guy's pin, and gets in his car and takes him off. Like thank God we were able to have like it caught the license plate and everything when he did. Uh huh. And if it wasn't if it wasn't for me revealing my dash cam before I pulled out of that lot, that poor truck driver would have never known it. And on top of everything, it was a fuel tanker. Oh my God! Like, who the was, hell would do awesome. like who the hell would do that? That's so. I've heard stories for years, and I'm always double checking my fifth wheel pull. That's, but oh my God, the, who the best would thing do they that? could do like I hate to, I I always tell truck drivers this all the time because I used to work for a company and we had tractor trailers pulling in and out of the company constantly. Mm -hmm. And the one day a truck driver, I don't know what he did, he pulled out from our building and got halfway up the road. And we're all staying out there, like we're on our lunch break and we hear this loud bang. And me being a first responder, my first thing is I took off running. Right. As soon as I got up there, I got like halfway up to his truck and I saw exactly what happened. I turned around with the opposite direction. Everybody goes, well, why aren't you going to the truck? I said, I already know what it is. I said, I'm going to need a forklift to get this guy's trailer back up onto his truck. Oh, wow. And what, when I got the forklift and I finally got there, I said, I'm going to tell you right now, they always teach you this in CDL training. Mm -hmm. No matter what you are doing, anytime you stop that truck, you should check your load. You should check mm -hmm. your pin to make sure you're hitched correctly. Check all of your connecting connections and your lines to make sure everything is good. Mm -hmm. They tell you, anytime you pull in and out of a loading dock, to make sure you do the same exact thing. Because you don't know if you're inside the truck somewhere, if you got out of your truck, if somebody just decided to be a smart aleck and go over and check your stuff. So true. And I mean, I've seen it so many times where we, I mean, I, even me, I was up climbing up and over on the back of my truck when I used to drive flatbed off the farm. And one time I didn't know, I knocked my brake light out. I drove for 16 miles before I got pulled over by a cop. And he said, sir, you have no brakes. I said, they were just working when I left that shop. Oh, I come wow. to find out my bro my brake line was knocked off. So I didn't have any lights for over 16 miles. Oh, wow. That is crazy. Um, by the way, before I let you go, what type of dash cam do you use? Um, unfortunately, it's gonna, this will shock you because it's not a real dash cam. We actually have 
four GoPros that we put around our whole truck. Oh my God. So there's, there's one in the front window you know, and whatever vehicle we use, we always have one up on, on the dashboard. One stays in the very back of the truck of the vehicle or a trailer. If we have one pulled on and we turn around and try to put one on either side of the vehicle at all times. Don't tell me the pager's going off now. Oh, never mind. Different county. Thank God. Oh. <laughs> like I, I hear my pager going off in the background. I'm like, oh no. And I like, remember those days. I kind my, of my missed pager it. picks up. My pager picks up three different counties, so it's like a. Yeah, I like hear it's you. So hard to, like, it's like today. It's like everybody's like, oh, I want to hear what the scanner talks about. I'm like, um, yeah, good luck because you're not going to hear one. Everything's going digital now, so it's like your mm-hmm. scanners are just might as well be in the garbage can because it's not going to do any good. Right. Yeah. Everything's and moving like over. The hard, and the hard part is the fire de- the crews that I, like, I do work with a couple fire departments because I they do what's called a liaison thing. So like if they don't have a driver, they'll call me for assistance because they know I know what, what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't have the money to go buy me a pager. So I turned around and I bought a portable scanner that actually was set where I can get all the correct codes I need. But the sad part is I only get the dispatch. I don't get anything else. Oh, no. So the hard part is that some of those channels are so close where if I have a truck driver drive by me, their CB radios will go right across my scanner. Oh, wow. So it's like that's how close we are. And unfortunately, it's real hard because some of these scanners, are like you don't know if you need your FCC license or all these different certifications to have just to carry them. Mm-hmm. Or right. like, thank God I'm a DJ. I already have all that stuff. So I, <laughs> I back myself up. I turn around. I called up the guy. I, I do my licenses through. I said to him, I said, yo, I have this scanner. I'm not sure what licensing it is. Mm-hmm. So he's like, well, I will come to you and you can let me, I'll look at your scanner quick and he goes, I'll tell you if you need a license for it or not. Mm-hmm. I said, well, just to play it safe. I said, can I just automatically throw it underneath my stuff, my mm-hmm. business? He goes, Oh yeah, if you just want to do it that way, you go through just save yourself money, time and hassle anyways, just in case it's not. <laughs> it was easier just to put it down underneath my stuff. Right. That's so true. Well, thank you and, so Oh I mean, sorry. I, I did notice oh sorry. I was gonna say I did notice earlier you were saying something about uh, some of the language that you're using. Mm-hmm. Um most most of the platforms that you are on, like when you're on live video feeding, mm-hmm. it's they usually don't pay attention to what the language is being used. Now, where if you're on air, like regular radio stations or stuff, or like YouTube channels, mm-hmm. they will block the, they will block out and censor out the cursing, unless you are paying for a paid subscription to something where it's not the user that's uh, putting out the content, it's the viewers have to pay for it to get that uncensored stuff. Got you. Okay, I was wondering about that because I know a lot of the regulations have lightened up over the years as far as radio goes, um, but. but- I, well, I I'll figured... put it this way. Like most, mm-hmm. most of the radios that we get in our cars, that's all going to be censored because you can't say any curse words on there. Mm-hmm. But now, if you're using a satellite radio setup, then you can say whatever you want because there's no rules, regulations, or anything. It's like you can get away with all the stuff. Like I can tell you there's a station on satellite radio right now. It's called Outlaw Country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of truck drivers that listen to it because the station was set up specifically for truckers. And some of the language and the terms and the music that you hear on that channel, you look at yourself and be like, did I just literally enter the sailors uh, and, and be, join the army and became a sailor or what? Because the language you would think you're sitting next to a room full of sailors. <laughs> so that, that, that's the easiest way for me to put for people. Like if you have the question of, am I able to say this or not? The mm-hmm. best bet is to not do it. But if you now know that you're like working off of a satellite uh, platform, Mm-hmm. then you're a little, little okay. Like if you're going to be like for you uh, streaming on multiple setups, like I know Facebook, you can get away with it, but I'm not sure about the other sites. Mm-hmm. We'll find out. Satellite radio. Here I come. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in, Barry. It was great to talk to you. You're, you are so welcome and God bless you. And no matter what, always be safe out there on that road. Same to you. God bless. I've seen I've seen your truck so many times down through PA all the time. I never get the chance to stop and catch up to you. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be back out there soon. <laughs> nice to talk to you. You too. God bless you all. God bless. Right. All right, guys. I know we got some other callers waiting. 
So, so nice to talk to Barry. There is a 60 second delay before it's going to ring through. Ring through. So if you're on hold, just hang on. It's going to connect you here in a minute. But that was such a good conversation, especially when it comes to the dash cam. Oh my God, there are crazy people out there. Like I used to, well, in law enforcement, I've seen it all. Like I've seen people run naked through the woods. I'll have to tell you, somebody almost hit a, a car, almost hit a naked man one night. I was the first, <laughs> I was the first officer on the scene. I will tell you that story sometime soon. But yeah, he came out of the woods like a deer and we just about had to have a <laughs> hit a deer report. MBA and it was a naked man. You just never know what you're going to see out there. It only takes that 1%, just that 1%. <laughs> anyway, if you guys are waiting on the line, I know there is a glitch. And um, if you have been trying to call in and couldn't get through, uh, I encourage you to try again. The number is 188. Here, let me put it on screen. The number is, I'm so happy this is not backwards. <laughs> and I like this paper thing. 1-888-322-7753. 888-322-7753. Give me a call and we will, it will put you on a holding loop until we're able to connect it. And by the way, let me refresh this page just to make sure that it hasn't frozen. I I noticed earlier on some of the tests this page likes to go to sleep and then I won't get a ring. So anyway, it was so nice to talk to Barry. He, we hit on so many issues, like key issues. Okay, First Amendment was one of them. And somebody brought this up to me when it comes to platforms like Facebook and YouTube. And the problem is so much of our society, our communications are on these platforms and they're privately owned. So we have a government, we have a inalienable rights. We have a first amendment in this country, but how does that work on a private level? Let's take another caller. This is a call for on air live from Carl. Ew, Carl. To I think accept I know this, this call, person. press 1 to send the caller into voicemail. Carl, you are on the air live. Can you hear me? Yeah. Long hey. time listener, first time caller. How are you? I am amazing. Actually, I think technically you are a second time caller. Hey, but hey, due hey, to hey, the hey, virus, <laughs> due to the virus, we haven't released that previously recorded episode. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, things are going pretty good so far for you. Mm hmm You know, so that's a plus. Uh, yeah, a few glitches. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, about the, the truck driver things we were talking about with the, mm -hmm. uh, Everybody, everybody giving so much, you know, attention to truck drivers that all of a sudden, you know, which is nice, you know, but, you know, they have to know we're not going to let our truckers ain't letting their guards down. They know this is going to, this is going to stop, you know, as soon as everything's over with, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to go right back to the way it was, you know, can't find a place to park, can't find a place to eat, people mm -hmm. running off the road to get in front of you and everything else, you know, mm -hmm. so, but. I mean, it, it seems to but, be human nature that. We, we just do that. I mean, look at, okay, I guess there's exceptions to this because you, you look at 9-11, right? Nobody expected a terrorist attack to that level. We were all blindsided sighted, and you would know because you were one of the responders and at least in right. Pennsylvania. And um, so then we're so careful with our safety and ramping up security and all of these programs, which still exist to these day, to this day, but I think society as a whole has forgotten that things like this can happen again. Oh, it, it it has it has, and the thing is, is you know it wasn't it actually wasn't too long after it, it took place that 
things start to get relaxed already is, you know, now in New York, Pennsylvania, you know, uh, where the Pentagon and everything's located at, that was, that was a different situation there. It was still fresh to everybody's mind, but most people in the world weren't affected by it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't last that long. Uh, I know the uh, airports and that were supposed to do all these big screenings and everything, and people were walking through with no issues whatsoever. They weren't properly trained or anything else. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't too long until a lot of it was forgotten about, you know. And the thing with the coronavirus is, I mean, you know, if you think about it, it is it is the perfect terrorist attack. Uh, their their goal is to attack our finances. Uh, mm-hmm. Their goal is to to uh, to uh, put fear in people and cause death. And you know, if this if this virus was was made for this purpose, then it, it did its job perfectly. And mm-hmm. something we weren't prepared for at all, and we're still not prepared for it. You know. So true. Yeah, from the time this thing started spreading. I've had my suspicions. It just seems, well, of course, you have all these old movies, right? You have like Stephen, Mm -hmm. who is it? Stephen King, The Stands, that was Mm -hmm. all about coronavirus, except without the name. And it just had every, every keynote of being bioengineered, it seems. But my problem from the start was like, where's the evidence? Okay, how do we prove it? You know, there's reasonable suspicion and then there's proving a case and you know until recently where i've heard there's actually some evidence coming out that there was a level was it a level four bio lab in china or something that somebody Mm -hmm. said it was released it got released accidentally yeah apparently Mm -hmm. and when the uh the scientist that was working on it tried to let people know about it he disappeared he suspiciously passed away which you know is there's nothing unheard of, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the thing is, is, you know, they got to be able to, to dissect this thing down to the, the, the micros in it. Cause I mean, uh, you know, now you have it. So they said, okay, once, once you get it, you, you ain't gonna be able to get it again, but mm-hmm. it's pretty much reprogrammed itself. And it's attacking people that's already had it before. It's a different strand, same virus, different strand. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, and you have people that have different symptoms, so it's attacking everybody differently. So mm-hmm. you can't sit there and say, well, you know, we did all this, so we're good. You know, no, 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 we're not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then they're rushing to get everything open back up. I understand our economy is suffering. Yes, I, I understand. And like you, I'm fortunate. You know, I drive truck. I'm an essential worker right now. So I have work. Mm-hmm. It's slowing down drastically right now, but you know it had work, so I'm happy about that. But this is going to come back tenfold in the fall, and if they start opening things up too early right now, it's going to come back even more so than what it hit originally. Mm-hmm. And you know, we yeah, everybody wants to get back to normal. I, I want to get back to normal. You know, but it's just, you know, we live out in the country, so we're not affected as much by it as what you are in the city and everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still, we really have to sit there and consider because, like, okay, you get people, I I see people in in, in the store shopping, they have the mask on, but it's covering their mouth, not their nose. (laughs) You know, so not doing no good. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people with gloves on. You know, but here's my thing. You're, You're touching everything in the store with these gloves on. Mm-hmm. You know, you pick up one box of cereal. How many? Think about how many people touched that box before you touched it. Mm-hmm. You know, the box had to be manufactured. The people touched it there, and it's got to go to get the get the the cereal put in it, so it's touched there. Mm-hmm. And it's packed into a bigger box for shipping. It's touched there. Then it's opened up in the store. It's touched again. It's put up on shelves. And how many people's moved it in the time of being on that shelf? Right, and these people are still, you know, I see people with, with gloves on, scratch their face, scratch their nose, you know, you're not solving anything, you know, you're not achieving anything whatsoever, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, you know, they're not, but nobody was properly educated. Everybody's saying, "Well, just put a gloves and mask on, you'll be good." Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're not, if you don't know how to properly take off medical gloves or any type of gloves properly, 
you're going to spread on yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you got people with gloves on reaching in their pockets to pull out their wallets or anything else. Well, okay, mm-hmm. so your gloves on, you pick, you pulled your wallet out of your purse or out of your pocket, but when you go home and you grab your wallet again, are you going to have gloves on? Chances are, no. Yeah, and how many? I just so put pulled want. up. By the way, I just pulled up an article. Our live viewers can see it on the screen right now. And it's from WebMD. And it's titled, How Long Does the Coronavirus Live on Surfaces? And it's got a few examples here. Backing up what you said. Okay, so with metal, example, doorknobs, jewelry, silverware. Five days, according to WebMD. Yeah. Looks five like days. Furnit- That's a long time. It sure is. F- furniture, decking, four days. Plastics, two to three days. How much plastic do we have in the store? Cardboard. Yeah. Examples, shipping boxes, 24 hours. If you've yeah. got people constantly, you know, breathing on or just talking, exactly. the water particles are hitting the cardboard. And mm-hmm. who knows how many times a minute? I mean, 10 times, 100 times a minute with and, all the shoppers? And, you know, like... It's like the, uh, the the air dryer, the hand dryers in the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. You know, it's already been proven that using them hand dryers, you're basically getting sprayed with fecal matter. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's warm. So you're producing everything you need for a germ. That sounds a bad, okay? like a bad combination. But, yeah, but now you're going in there and you're washing your hands. Mm-hmm. And you're using this hand dryer. People are in there blowing their nose. They're using the restrooms. They touch anything with their bare hands, so they put their gloves back on because they just washed their hands, they figure, so they're good. Most people don't wash their hands properly as it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a safe situation, and people weren't properly taught or trained on how to – people, okay, well, it's, it's a mask and gloves. How hard could it be? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, you can put a mask and you put gloves on. First of all, make sure you cover your nose and put your mask on because that's kind of essential. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and cover your mouth, cover your nose, and you know your gloves on. But you know, think about this: where you reach for your wallet, you reach for your purse, or you reach down and you grab your child by the hand because it's, you know, it drops his binky, or you know, he started to run off. Or I mean, you're not thinking about this because it's not how we live; it's not our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. So this is not solving; it's reducing the risk. But, I mean, it might be reducing it by maybe a percent, Mm -hmm. okay, which right now we'll take every percentage we can get to reduce this. But all honestly, if they would have had a program or something up saying, hey, look, you know, these are things you keep remember. Okay, don't touch your face. You think, okay, yeah, don't touch your face. Great. Okay, people still do because they don't think about it. But there's a lot more involved you're touching than just your face because you're not thinking about it. Mm Mm-hmm. So you're not reducing anything. If anything, you're still spreading. You're spreading more because people think are more comfortable. I got gloves on. I got a mask on. I'm safe. I'm good. Mm-hmm. But you know they're not, and it's scary that the government is just. Yeah, you know, I heard something on the radio earlier today, and it was pretty much it was a joke, but it was the point that you know, if everybody who has it just passes away, then look at how much money it saves the the, the you know the billions of dollars we send out for everybody to help for their, their pays and everything. You know, we just saved that money on, you know, for people because the population's dying off. Mm-hmm. You know. And it was it was commented as a joke, but it's not. It's not a joke at all. Because mm-hmm. The, it almost seems like the way the government is looking at it, like, okay, well, you know, if they get it, they get it, they don't, they don't, they survive, they do, they don't, well, you know, sorry, sorry for your loss, we we pray for you, we, we feel we feel sad for it, but all honestly, the government cares about government, and that's it, you mm-hmm. know, they care about number one thing comes down to the final dollar, and votes, you know, votes in November right now, everybody wants these votes in November, so everybody's mm-hmm. talking out their butts, and <laughs> you know all these testings going on. Oh, we're testing everywhere. Every anybody can get a test. Anybody can get a test. Well, 
as you heard Tabitha talk earlier, mm-hmm. she had all this, she had a lot of symptoms. She works in the general public. She has elderly people in and out of where she works all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's other people in and out of where she works all the time. People from other states come through the same place she works on a daily basis because it's in basically a tri area, tri state area. You know, but they want to say they told her, "Well, do you know if you came in contact with anybody with it?" Well, how are you supposed to know? You just sit there and ask every person who comes to the store, "Hey, do you have the coronavirus? <laughs> right? Or, do you have COVID nineteen? You know, do you have this? You know, because I gotta know because if you have this, I gotta go get tested. And I'm not know somebody's. Not, come on, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to get this problem solved, you know, let's do the testing. There's no reason to keep your numbers low. It's not benefiting nothing. You're not going to get more money or less money because your numbers are low or your numbers are high. Right. You know, let's just get the shit done so everybody can get back to work and get their lives back. Mm-hmm. You know, these people are not going to make it. And there's, there's, there's manufacturers shutting down now because as soon as a person in their store or their manufacturing has tested positive for the coronavirus, they had the mandatory shut down so everybody in the, in, the, in the business is tested and all tests come back negative. Mm-hmm. How many corporations, small mom pop businesses, is this going to affect after this is even over with? Mm-hmm. So, you know, so true. I mean, there's, yeah, and it's, it's just ridiculous that, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple-minded person. I don't, you know, I'm not college-educated or anything else, but, I mean, this to me is common sense. <laughs> it should be. And, and it seems like the people who are running the show just don't have it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I agree. That's been my whole concern when it comes to the PPP program because it's, like, that's why I was going after it. Right. Because I don't know who I'm going to get notified that I came in contact with who they say has the virus or they suspect has the virus. And then all of a sudden I'm in quarantine for two weeks and out of income, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. So and that was supposed to be the aid of this thing. But how do you how do you get that aid when they're telling you you got to take the leftovers of your profits, which many small businesses don't have those leftovers after paying their employees. Yeah, so they're just going to get left in the dark. Something's wrong. Majority of your small businesses, they make it like everybody else makes it, pay to pay. They're not millionaires. They're not billionaires. They're, you know, they've cut a little bit of a profit at the end of their their monthly or the end of their quarter. They cut profit, but, you know, they do it because it's something they enjoy doing or, you know, it's, it's, it's their business, and they want to make it. They want to make it grow. And they want to keep it strong, but they don't make a lot of money off this. Mm-hmm. And what irritates me is three big companies gotten up to like twenty million dollars. One got twenty million. Two other ones got ten million apiece. And the one, I can't remember what the name of the company was, but they said, "You know what? We had enough money. We don't need this. We're gonna put it back in in the pot." So it can go to where it's supposed to go to, to a ma and pop company. Mm-hmm. You know, these are multi-million dollar corporations, and they're getting twenty and ten million dollars. But ma and pop stores around the world are shutting down because they can't get eighteen thousand just to help cover you know employee expenses and, and survive for a couple more weeks. Mm-hmm. It's exactly and where are we getting this. Where are we getting this two trillion to two billion dollars? I think we're bar- Who are we borrowing this money from? Mm-hmm. Where is it coming from? We don't have the gold to back it up. <laughs> it's fiat you know, currency. It's going to devalue we're not, we're not, the not, whole economy. We're not mining gold right now. The only people mining gold are, are private companies, mm-hmm. and they're not making. They're not pr- producing that much gold. To cover two trillion dollars, two billion dollars, whatever one it is, debts. So who are we borrowing this off of? Who do we owe this money back to? Again, mm-hmm. we're so far in debt. Now I grant you that I have no problem with this being able to help people out. I'm right. glad we are doing something to help people who can't work right now. 
And mm-hmm. I, I am I am very glad the government stepped up and was able to do something to do this. But how much thought was put into this process? Is it going to come back and bite the American citizens in the in the butt when this is all done and over with? And we're going to be in a another financial crisis, mm-hmm. and it's just going to progressively start going back downhill. I agree. Because who's paying for this? It's the citizens. It's the tax money. And as Tammy, Tammy Pinkster commented that many small businesses could be sole proprietors, 1099s, who don't have W-2 employees. And I, I've heard that technically speaking, the 1099 still qualified because you're self-employed. But the thing is, I also heard that they were turning down a lot of applications because they weren't on payroll. So what well, the hell? Yeah, like, uh, how many contractors do we have across this country who are running a small business as 1099? Oh, and the majority of your contractors are. And the majority of them are out of work right now and trying to do anything they can to keep their employees around because they know pretty much once they take off, they're not going to be able to get them back, you know. And, you know, with the unemployment, this hit the unemployment market so hard. There's still people that filed right away that lost their jobs as soon as all the all the cuts were taken. As soon as they said, you know, we gotta stop businesses, we gotta stop this, we gotta stop that, you gotta shut down. Mm-hmm. These people went and immediately filed for unemployment. They still have yet to receive a check, and every time they call in to try to follow up on it, including calling the local or calling the state governor's office, they're getting answer machines. No one's talking to them. What are these people supposed to do? Mm -hmm. There seems to be a huge disconnect on the whole rollout. Yeah, it's, you know, what are they supposed to do with no income coming in? Mm -hmm. And with no income coming in, just this, uh, you know, $800 to $1,200, however much they got, you know, I'm sorry for the average family. That money is not going to go very far, Mm -hmm. you know? So... You know, somebody's really got to stop and think, you know, to to try to fix this before it gets tremendously worse, and it's going to. Mm-hmm. What do you think we can do in this position? Because it's like we're we're between a rock and a hard place at this point. Well, because we are. I mean, I mean, if we if we stay home, which I I'm in full support of to limit the spread of this because I think you're right. I think as soon as we go back to work, it's going to spread like wildfire, especially in it's, the it's fall. Going to. And, and that's, that's, that's the biggest problem is, you know, what should we do? I, I don't have the answer to that. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, there's people a lot smarter than me that I'm sure have the answer, but nobody wants to listen to them. You know, I, I hate to see people stay home and keep missing work. Mm-hmm. Because our our structure has failed the citizens of, of the United States majorly. Once again, we have failed our backbones of America. We have failed them again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because everything hit so hard, oh, we could predict this. Okay, our intel was at the beginning of November – had came to the government, came to the president, came to their supervisors and said, hey, look, we have intel that this virus is leaked and it's causing major problems in China. It won't be long until it makes its way over here. Mm-hmm. They don't know what it is. They don't have a cure. You know, where, what happened? Where, where, where did the communication fail from when our government was notified up until January before all of a sudden we started talking about it? And even then, our our, our president, the word's hardest far for me to say, <laughs> uh, he still failed in a lot of areas where he should have progressed in. Mm-hmm. He still waited. And, 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 you know, he says, well, you know, I when, when I did this, you know, I got yelled at. Why are you doing this so soon? Why are you doing this so soon? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, when it comes to the safety of the people of the United States, I don't give a rat a hookie who's got what to say about it. If you've got something that's going to be able to help save our citizens and keep in a financial area, 
and you are the president of the United States, and you have the power to make something happen, mm-hmm. you need to step up and say, okay, shut up unless you have a better idea than what I do. We need to get this process rolling now. Mm-hmm. We need to think about our citizens. You know, and, and now sitting there, you know, having to tell people, okay, well, I want everybody to go back. To, everybody should be able to go back to work. You should call me up and back up. So, you know what? You should all go out and, and protest that because you like me, we should go out and protest and get this all, you know, get everything back. To, okay, that's not solving nothing. Mm-hmm. People are irritated. They're angry as it is because our government has failed them mm-hmm. because of this virus, you know. And you can't sit and, and they want to get back to work. They want to get their lives back to normal. They're tired of being mm-hmm. in their house. And you can't sit there and tell them, well, go out and protest and, and make it peaceful. Well, it's not going to be peaceful because people are PO'd right mm-hmm. now and it's going to boil over. For good reason. Yeah. Yeah. But the you thing know, is, I, I mean, it's, it's the same thing that we faced after 9-11. It's the whole freedom versus security. And mm-hmm. now it's back on the forefront. What do we do? Should should we have some executive order for a lockdown, which, of course, the president is refusing to officially make that executive order? I mean, the, they're issuing guidance, I, but here's the problem. Our system of that. law can't do that because we have freedom to peaceably assemble. And yet here we've mm-hmm. got governors telling you that you can't. But at the same time, if you let it go on, then... Will we even have a country? How have, many people are going to die? Gonna, so it's like, what do you do? Yeah. You're going you're gonna to start a civil war mm-hmm. in the middle of a time where you can't – first of all, we can't afford a civil war, you know, and it's not going to solve a freaking thing. It's just going to cause more lives to be lost because people are hot-headed and they're angry, you know? And exactly. it's just it, it, it's irritating because there's there's no I don't think right now there's no easy answer there's no easy solution to this whole problem I don't mm-hmm. think there is you know my suggestion as much as I would hate to say it is you know we should go on a mandatory lockdown mm-hmm. it's it get all get oh first of all get all the tests we need to do to test to see if you have it the test to see if you're immune to it whatever test we need to get each state each county should have enough tests to be able to test every citizen in that area. Mm-hmm. Get all these tests set up ready to go and say, okay, we are going to go on a lockdown until everybody is tested and all results are done. Then we can sit there and take all the information, all the data, we can put it into our system and figure out where we stand for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and go that route. To, say, to do that, you're going to get the people who need medical attention. You're going to be able to get them in the, in the system and get them attention right away to help get them to survive this virus. People that are immune to it, there might be a good reason. Mm-hmm. Is it their blood? You know, a lot of people are going to say, hey, you know what? If there's something in my blood that makes me immune to this, it's going to help somebody. You need, how often can I donate? You know? People want to get back to work. They want to get back to their normal life. Mm -hmm. But they need the guidance of our leaders to, first of all, stop being freaking Democrat and Republicans and start being freaking human beings, which we all are. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care what your race is. I don't care what your nationality is. At this point in time, and never should it ever matter, but at this point in time, it does not matter. Mm -hmm. We are all citizens of the United States. We all need to be taken care of, and we need the proper guidance from our leaders to take care of this. We may not be happy with what is said we have to do, but if it's going to resolve this problem and get people taken care of and get people healed, how many people died at home of the coronavirus, but it was said they died of something else because they were never tested for the coronavirus? Mm-hmm. You know, Or how many people died at home of something else? And you automatically blame for the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we we gotta have leaders that are gonna step up, put this Democrat Republican bullcrap off to the side, pretend to be citizens, 
pretend to actually acknowledge the fact that you work for the citizens of the United States. You know, we the people, for the people, by the people. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to you be, know? right? I mean, this is, yeah. You know, put all this bull crap off to the side and come up with a solution. We may not be happy with the solution, but you know what? If it's going to solve the issues, let's get the issues resolved. I agree completely. I And I think, you know, it's it's human nature once again to pick a team, right? You're picking a side and we rally against each other and, you know, somebody wins this time and then somebody wins the other game and it's gone on for history and we almost psychologically need to do that in order to have something to fight for or an opponent to fight against. But should not we organize on the side of neither Republican, Democrat, or I claim independent, but even that becomes a class of its own. We should just be right. freaking Americans standing up exactly. for people and fighting against tyranny. Like, that's what it's about. Yep. That's the only thing you that's going to save this nation. And we need to have leaders that are, stopped, that are not so freaking high on themselves that think that everybody should bow before them. And, you know, well, if you don't, if you don't acknowledge me and what I'm doing, I'm not going to acknowledge you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't show me gratitude for what I did. Well, I'm not going to help you out. You know, come on. You know, this is getting childish. It's getting petty. It's not even funny anymore. It, it's sad. It truly is sad. It is. You know, put all this, all this crap off to the side. Start worrying about number one, and that is the citizens of the United States. Because believe me, right now, if the citizens could void your paychecks, we would. Mm -hmm. We tell you right now, right out flat. You want your paycheck? Get this shit resolved. Exactly. You know, we're going to hold your paychecks until this is resolved. I mean, something has to be done here. We have presidents, vice presidents, senators, congressmen, mayors, governors. We have all these people that are supposed to lead us. We voted them in the, in the office for them to lead us, for them to guide us into hopefully victory and, and into, you know, a financial situation that's good for us and, you mm -hmm. know, a life that is, is good for us. You know, we didn't vote these people in to sit there and constantly fight and nothing gets resolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as long you as know, we're, and, we're playing partisan politics, it's always going to be about which side you're on. And we're not yeah. going to get anywhere. We're not. We're not going to go anywhere with it. Nope. You know, but, any, but everything everything is separated, you know. Right. The, the black community is separated. The white community is separated. This community is separated. This community is separated, you know. And now, you know, and, and it's religion. Religion separates everything. Mm -hmm. And now yep, you got the government. Thing. The government separates everything. You know, stop. We all bleed red. We all were created by God. You know, whether no matter what God you believe in, your God and your belief created you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So unless you're atheist and you were created by a microorganism that fell out of the sky, landed on a rock and hatched, okay, still, you're created by something. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are all the same. Mm -hmm. All across this world, we are all the same. We need to stop this crap and start acting like human beings. So true. Somebody said no more the ego. Time, so much of it's about yeah. ego. The only time I've seen Americans that I've firsthandly seen act like humans was 9-11. And, and, and the following days mm -hmm. afterwards for a couple weeks. It didn't last long. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there was humanity. There was love. There was, you know, there was so much that you, you, you just you didn't know how to handle it. You know, and, and now it's just, it, it's, it, it's I, I just don't, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I pretty much, I think I voiced everything I could on, on the subject. And I just, uh, until, until everybody starts trying to be adults, uh, supposed to be our leaders, well, we're not going to get anywhere with this at all. So we're true. We're going to keep losing lives and having people in the hospitals and having people ill because they can't be tested. It's just going to be an ongoing problem. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, so true. I couldn't agree more. So, so but I will go ahead and let you go back to your show and have hopefully maybe some more people on. But <laughs> that I think awesome. you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, thank you. And I will talk to you later. Okay, I'm so glad to have you on. I'm so thankful you called if I can get over my echo. 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 <laughs> I, I don't have, I mean, I hear, I when I'm talking to you, I hear our our conversation in the background, mm -hmm. but I don't have an actual, there's no actual echo. Thank God. It doesn't seem to be on the live stream side or the recorded. It's just in my earpiece or my headset. So oh, <laughs> I'm going to have okay. to get a tech person to get out here and uh, figure out right. why I have an echo on my end. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your show. <laughs> Same have a good night. All right. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. All right. Such a good show tonight. See, this is what I'm passionate about. It. And let me say it this way. Because I'm very off the cuff. And I just want to be authentic about how I feel about things. And I'm not... I don't play partisan politics. I believe in us people as a nation supporting each other and talking interactively about all these issues because I sure as hell don't have the answer. I don't. And I personally, I don't think our leaders do either. And I mean, what would you do? What would you do? It's easy to say, you know, I would do this or I would do that or act sooner or we should have held off and not acted so soon or you know, we could talk about all these things, but when you're in a position where people's lives are at stake, it's like, what do I do? What do I do? If I act too soon, people are going to die. If I act too late, people are going to die. And, you know, the only thing I go back to is we need to stop making this about politics and sides and start making this about America and we the people and we have them, some things to discuss and we need to talk about these things and vote our conscience. And I respect the way you vote. Just vote your conscience. Like, anyway, going back to what I was saying before that tangent is I, I do a lot of things. I have a vlog channel, Brittany Richardson on YouTube. We're live right now on Brittany Richardson Facebook page and my personal Facebook. And we're on Brit Brittany in Pink. We're on a private group. And I have the capability of going on like 30 plus platforms. Or, you know, we just haven't tonight. This is kind of off the cuff. I'm just telling you what I think in between the echo. 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 We're going to get along, Mike. We're going to get along. <laughs> but here's the thing. People that watch me on American Truckers on YouTube, they see a truck driver. They see a certain side of me that may, maybe some people see as arrogant. You know, some people are like badass truck driver. And there's a huge element to me that's badass on that end. Trust me, I've seen a lot. <laughs> My first week in law enforcement was an active shooter. You know, I've seen stuff that would make you sick. And I've had to deal with it. It's a you can cry later type of thing. You got somebody's life to save right now. But there's different sides to me. I mean, we're all, as people, we're all multifaceted, right? There's so many sides to you. And it's not that we're two-faced. It's not that we're quad-faced. It's that we're dynamic. We're dynamic. Like you, Mike. Mike, you are dynamic. And something else. But I'm not going to say <laughs> but somebody that watches Brittany Richardson on YouTube, they see some of my home life. They may see me out storm chasing, you know, and go, oh my God, you're a storm spotter. Yeah, I have my BLS certification. I used to work as a first responder. I can relate to a lot of these callers, but a lot of people don't know that because they only see a piece of me. They only see a piece of me on one platform or another or Britney and Pink. And even though every platform, I am being completely authentic. Like, I am authentic to the core. And those that have met me in person know how authentic I am. I just say what's on my mind. And I think that's why the platforms have become so 
powerful is because I'm just being transparent. I'm a human. These are my thoughts and this is what I think. And I'm open to suggestions and I want to hear what you think. And that's what this is all about right here. It's not about playing, hey, look at me, I'm a radio host, or look at me, I'm the next Rush Limbaugh, or a Republican, or Democrat, or <laughs> Independent, or I heard you say something good about Trump, and then the anti-Trump bunch come harass the hell out of me, and then I say something negative about Trump, and then I have all the Trump supporters come and yay, Brit, Trump 2020, 2021, anyway. Uh, 2020. The thing is that I'm just a person. I'm just being authentic and sharing my thoughts and you're going to see a different piece of me depending on, you know, kind of what I'm doing. I, I'm just like anybody else, but I'm here with this, doing this live thing tonight, testing it out for the first time because I want to hear from you guys. I'm the type of person and I've always been that way, even as a leader. I mean, I, I've been lead detective and in investigations. I've, in the past, I've, you know, been in upper management position with companies. I, I had the power to just say one word and we got five people fired. But the thing was, my most powerful passion as a leader is to listen. Because if I can't listen, everybody's got a different perspective, right? Everybody has a different, we all have different eyes. You're seeing things that I don't. You're thinking of things that I'm not thinking about as a truck driver, as a woman, as a person, things that I might not see. And I want to hear from you. I want to give you a voice. And that's what this is all about, is having a transparent, I almost said radio. It's a kind of radio. It is podcast, podcasting. We're on social media. We're live right now. It took 16, 20 hours for me to figure out these electronics to do this. But it's all about connecting with you guys and giving you guys a voice so that people can hear what's going on in the real world. So I'm going to give one last call. It does look like, it almost looks like we had a missed call here. I'm going to give one last call for anybody who, this is the last call. Because trust me, I am so tired. I'm going to be going to bed soon. But I want to give one last opportunity for you guys to call in. If there's any more callers, this is the number on the screen. It is 888-322-7753. 888-322-7753. You're welcome to call in if we don't have any callers in the next minute or two, then I will go ahead and wrap it up for tonight and we will go on. Let me refresh this page. I learned all of these things in the uh, tech trials today. So we're getting better. We're getting better. And I think me and the mic are kind of learning to jive a little bit. I need to give the mic a name. <laughs> I'm going to start having conversations with the mic. This needs to be a whole segment. <laughs> Call the mic like Tony or something. Conversations with Tony. Oh, who's Tony? The mic. Tony's got a slight echo. Tony's got issues. But hey, we all have issues. <laughs> put a, we need to get like a little smiley face and googly eyes and like put it on the mic. Have a little label below it. Say Tony. Howdy, I'm Tony. Put a little cowboy hat on it. <laughs> See, I told you, these are just my thoughts, people. These are just my thoughts. So once again, last call, 888-322-7753. If you have a question or a story or you just want to talk about anything tonight, I am open. We talked about, uh, we talked about religion earlier. <laughs> they say you don't want to talk about religion. Brit talks about religion. You know why? Because we live in a free country. We do. I don't dislike Christian people. <laughs> I, I'm very open. I, I don't, I, I am so open and embrace 
people of faith. I really do, because I think we need to have this discussion. I think it's important just to have it. I could completely disagree with you personally. I don't care. I want to hear what you have to say. So we got a caller coming in. I'm going to go ahead and answer. See who we got. <clears throat> this is a call for on air live from Mason, Nick. Oh, okay. To I know who this, this call, is. Press one to send the caller into voice. Should we let Nick three. on the air? Give me some loves if we should let Nick on the air. Give me some hearts, everybody on social media. Hey, Nick, you are live. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how's it going? I have not talked to you in forever. Oh, my God. Yeah, I've been following you, so. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So what's on your mind? I actually think you should name the mic Jake. Jake, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Jake from State Farm, what are you wearing? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we need to get, like, these little khakis, like, for, you know. <laughs> A little doll or something. You could decorate it. Yes. No, um, I was listening in a little bit. I don't, I don't know who the last guy was that called in. Oh yeah, um, Carl. Whenever I chimed in. Mm -hmm. Um. But a lot of it is just everybody. There's so much hate going on between the parties, and it's getting, it's getting really depressing, and it's affecting people's daily lives of just hearing the news and the fights and no one listening to what really needs to happen it's all about well there's a lot of different pinpoints to it but it's mm -hmm. either money related or it's who's benefiting currently from what is how mm -hmm. i see things i'm very gray i see a lot of the black and white and i can understand some different points might not fully agree with them but i could understand mm -hmm. why people think that way Mm -hmm. You know, because everybody has a job no matter what class it's in. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's trying to personal gain at something, at some, somewhere, you know. So if you're at the top of the chain, where else do you keep going? I, I understand that, but then there's still the little guys, you know, like me, mm -hmm. that still work 40 hours, never call out, that still need help because um, it's not a real living wage right now mm -hmm. but i just wish uh people would kind of let go of the the party differences and just kind of focus on the real issue mm -hmm. and uh it's kind of upsetting when i've seen whichever party try and push bills that are not even related to the coronavirus or the pandemic um mm -hmm. i saw that the Democrats were trying to push a, a Pelosi or somebody try to push a, an abortion bill in the middle of all this um, about two weeks ago. And it was upsetting because it's like, okay, let's get back on topic. Mm -hmm. You know, let's talk about the pandemic. Where are we going? How's the economy? You know, um, mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going with this now. <laughs> I can talk forever. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I love hearing your opinion because I had the same thought and it's nothing against Pelosi. Hey, Pelosi, if you're listening, please call me. We can have a good discussion. I'll let you say whatever you want. I want to talk to you because I had some I questions. I would love to talk to everybody. Yes. Pelosi, Trump, <clears throat> everybody, because I want to learn why are they doing the things that they're doing? Like, mm -hmm. what's that motive? You mm -hmm. know, you have what's in the news media with all the channels say the same thing or, you know, get the facts from that person directly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, I think Trump and Pelosi need a reality show after they get out of government. <laughs> Jerry Springer. <laughs> Give me some thumbs up y'all. If you think <laughs> Pelosi and Trump need to be on together on, it'll be the next tiger King. You got to admit. They're like a brother-sister relationship <clears throat> thing going on. You think where, there's some like, love behind the scenes? Stand each other. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of hope so, you know. Everybody needs mm -hmm. love, but. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but I think we all, you touched on it when you said, you know, a lot of us feel out of control when it comes to 
like, what can we do? We're, we're at our wit's end when it comes to our political situation in this country. And I think we feel like, what can we do? Like, what can we do? Is my vote going to count? Is anything going to change? Yeah. And no matter which side you were on in the last election, I think that's what the election was about. You know, it was about, yeah. we're, I don't care who we're putting in, we just want to see some sort of change because we're sick of this. And I think that was yeah. how a lot of people felt on both sides. Yep. In like last presidential election, I voted, I voted not with the, uh, the Republicans or the Democrats because I wanted to be that oddball person that votes with my gut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although I did go to a Bernie rally just because I was living in Lawrence and that's what's due. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, but, you know, I live in Johnson mm -hmm. County in Amel, and there's a lot of Republicans here and I've heard their side. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Lawrence where it's very liberal and I've heard their side. And it just gave me a lot of different insights and in trying to figure out where what direction do I go? Mm -hmm. And my direction is whatever gets us to the end goal. <laughs> I mean, I so agree. you know, I'm a little bit of everything. You know, I'm for the people. I'm for people being able to live a livable wage. But I'm also for um, gun rights. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, you know, you know, and they, a lot of things conflict each other. <laughs> so you can't just vote for certain parties, you know. Well, it's complex. But, you know, All of our issues are so complex. I mean, oh, yeah. one thing I know from law enforcement, no matter where somebody stands on the gun issue, I see the concerns. I see mm -hmm. where somebody that shouldn't have a gun is going into a school and shooting everybody up. And it's like, how the hell did they get a weapon? And then at the yep. same time, I understand as a police officer how the law is read. And a police officer's duty legally is to protect the public at large. Now, that's the key word, yep. at large, not individually, because they cannot guarantee an individual safety individually. That's why you hire security, a bodyguard, a security system, or have a firearm. So there's a lot of dimensions to this issue, and it's not black and white. And that's why I like to have discussions about it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. as I am a very proud and open gun owner, I also... I'm very big about safety and getting that knowledge and taking the trainings because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be part of that statistic that accidentally does something or goes out and just is reckless. Uh, you know, whenever I have a firearm present on me, I am, it's secure and it's, it's safe than some individuals that don't have that education. Sure. You know, I would love to see something mandatory on education, but you can't really push that because mm -hmm. there's always a re you can always get around anything. People love to find the flaws in things and find a way around it. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Which no system's going to be perfect. Yeah, I think I think all well, that starts at best. childhood. <laughs> We're finding well, loopholes even as <laughs> from uh, the time we don't crawl. get me started on you know. <laughs> Uh, foster care and whatnot and the mm -hmm. system. I mean, parenting has definitely changed. It has. You know, I wish we, you know, I got, I watched uh, three teenage foster boys and I'll tell you what, you can't discipline them. You know, I got a 15 year old that's a fe five time felon. You can't put him in jail because he's in the system. He only stays for a couple of days and comes back out, mm -hmm. you know, but he is violent and, you know, has all these issues going on due to his parenting from his mother and father mm -hmm. i don't know if there was a father but you know so it it's harder to discipline the kids now too because you can take their game systems away you can try to take their phone away you know you can try these things but there's not much you can really do anymore mm -hmm. and you know even the good parents out there get called on dcf Although this is completely off topic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm all over the place. But I'm the same way. I go off on rabbit tangents, <laughs> trails, holes, whatever you call them. Sometimes they're a hole and I don't come back out. 
I mean, really, like, whenever I've been on a ride-along with you, I mean, we talk the entire, like, what, eight hours? Oh, constantly. Don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> I need another ride-along. <laughs> yes, you do. We need to work that out. But um, there is some relation to the current situation, I believe, because look at our prison system. You know, like you mm -hmm. said, they're booting people out because we don't have the space. Or, yeah, that person killed five people but the other one killed 10 you know it's like so i feel yeah, like I mean, with this coronavirus the we're, we're, are evil. yeah exactly that's where we're at now it's like yeah. do we go back to work we need to because we got people committing suicide they're stuck at home they're losing everything are domestic we going to recover violence. yeah violence. domestic violence in kansas city i just read mm. was up 22 percent. oh my god yeah and, and that's, that's common you know, you got these people stuck at home. My my mother has severe depression, anxiety, and whatnot. And, I mean, this is just – she normally just stays home anyways, but she doesn't even feel comfortable going to the, even the grocery store at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the one thing she can look forward to with her anxiety, but yet she can't do it right now without fearing something. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might get chaotic or the virus or getting sick or mm – -hmm whatever it may be because you know you never know what to expect when you're out right now a lot of irrational things are happening too mm -hmm. i mean you might get in a fist fight over toilet paper i mean was it charmin or scott <laughs> i mean oh god i mean yeah, it's, it's crazy the things that are happening you know but i've also seen the really good about this quarantine about like teachers being engaged with their students um in a different aspect like I saw a t uh, whole bunch of teachers that drove past the house of one of their students just saying, hey, hello, we love you. We're thinking of you. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a lot of um, tables around in Olesa that have food that says, take what you need, you know. Oh, wow. You know, I've seen a lot of community-related things come together on this, which um, – I've always wanted to live in like a tiny cabin out in the woods away from people, but this kind of reminded me of, I, I do actually like people, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, it's given me a different insight of my future. Mm -hmm. um, so there is positives, but you know, I think three, four weeks in, I think we're good now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, exactly. and it's hard to know the number system on this coronavirus stuff because we have the flu that's even worse we have suicide that's even probably higher i'm not sure the statistics on that one mm -hmm. but we have all these other numbers that are so much greater um but also some of the things that have been counted like i saw this news article of an individual that had a heart attack and they counted it as covid 19 because he was asymptomatic Mm -hmm. How is that fair to put it on the statistics then? Exactly. I, th I think they're yeah, overwhelmed and they're just throwing it together. You know, so give me the real numbers. I want to hear those mm -hmm. ones. You know, just because you're asymptomatic doesn't mean you died from COVID. Exactly. You know, and I work in an intellectual disability mm -hmm. group home. And these guys, I mean, they don't work. They stay home. We go outside for some fresh air. I'm at work right now, um, but, you know, I see these individuals, I mean, they, they can't hug their parents. They can't see their parents. They have to video chat with their parents or family, and, it, I mean, some of these individuals, they don't understand, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on or how bad it is or how not bad it is. You know, we don't know, mm -hmm. and, you know, they always ask, you know, what are we doing the next day? I have no idea, mm -hmm. sure. you know? How do you, it's and like, so, how do you explain that to them? They're not going to, they're not going to uh -uh. understand. And my guys, mm -hmm. they are uh, routine oriented. You know, you do this at this time, you do this first, then this, you know. So mm -hmm. when you throw in, you can't do none of that. They, I mean, they're completely off the wall right now, like trying to figure out what's going on. Like I would sure. hate to be in that feeling of that state of mind. Sure. And, and I, I feel like most Americans are right now. <laughs> I was just going to you know? say, you know, look at how many people have somebody who's in the hospital in critical condition or have passed and they weren't able to see them. And so I think there mm -hmm. is a huge element of us as each person that we don't understand. 
you know, even though we understand we can't see them because it's that level of, it's, it's that type of situation, but there's an element of us call it inner child or whatever else that doesn't understand. We, it hurts. We need closure. We need to be able to be with our loved ones. And it's like, what do you do? You don't know how much you miss something until it's gone. And I've heard that all my life, but by golly, I've been feeling that a lot. Mm-hmm. Sure. Going to the store, going to the movies, you know, just the little things that I may only have done once a year, but now I'm told I can't do it at all. Mm-hmm. It's all another ball for you. Right. We drove but, past a theater the other day and there was a whole bunch of people parked at the theater not to go in and see a movie, <laughs> mind you, because it's shut. They just missed just the out. social interaction. They were there to talk outside in the parking lot. I was in front of a liquor store the other day, and there was a group of probably six people six feet apart from each other in a circle just hanging out and having mm-hmm. a cold one. <laughs> right. But they were six feet away. <laughs> well, God bless them. At least they were six feet away. <laughs> hanging out Good old America. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. But I am about to get out of work. So I need to probably cut this off now. Okay. I know I need to get some sleep. I really appreciate you calling in, Nick. And from work, my yeah, was... Yep. Yeah. And I was that missed call from earlier. I was like, wow, what does this number do? And then I hung up. <laughs> yeah, it'll just keep you on a loop for hours or until I answer. <laughs> I don't like that. It's like calling AT&T. I know. We need to make it better. We need to get Jake from State Farm. We need to like his voice on the hold. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, thank right. you so much well, for calling. It was good to talk to you. You as well. I'll uh, message you sometime. Okay, sounds great. All right. mm, bye. bye. Okay, let's see where I'm at here. Where's my login? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Checking my settings, guys. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Okay, guys, it's been a good show tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to share this broadcast. And uh, me and Jake are going to start getting along better. We're getting this echo thing synced up. So we're going to have to get some googly eyes and some pants and a little name tag. So, hey, State Farm, contact me. Sponsor opportunity. Anyway, I don't know. They might get mad at what I'll do with Jake on here. Okay. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. And be sure to share this. Like, leave me some comments. Continue the discussion afterwards on all of the platforms. Love you guys. And uh, more coming very, very soon.